Good morning. I'm Lisa Chick, President and CEO of the Alliance for Education. Thank you so much for joining us for our annual luncheon. I'm so glad we could all come together today. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on indigenous land, land that was colonized. Here in the Seattle area, that means Coast Salish land, Duwamish land. We recognize that places have history and recognize our Native American and indigenous community members, colleagues, partners, and relations who have, who have been stewards of this land since time immemorial. I want to start by thanking our presenting sponsor, Nordstrom, and our champion sponsors, Amazon, Alaska Airlines, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Boeing Company, Comcast, and Microsoft. We are so grateful for your support for the Alliance for Education today and always. I also want to thank our Seattle Public Schools teachers, staff, and leadership. As an SPS partner and an SPS parent, I could not be more grateful for the incredibly hard work of everyone in the district, always, and especially over the last two years. I'm amazed daily by your persistence, skill, and creativity under the most challenging circumstances. Thank you so much to everyone on the SPS team for all you do. The Alliance for Education's mission is to support excellence in education by advancing racial equity and educational justice in Seattle Public Schools. We deliver on this mission in a variety of ways. We support innovation in the district by identifying and developing proven and creative strategies that increase racial equity and justice for students. We raise dollars to invest in those strategies to make sure they're well-resourced and built to last. And we engage community across sectors in collaboration because, because we know that together we will always do better and go farther. In October of 2016, in my first month as CEO of the Alliance, I was invited to join a delegation of Seattle leaders traveling to California. Our plan was to visit the Kingmakers of Oakland program, a program that evolved out of Oakland Unified School District's Office of African American Male Achievement. You'll learn more about the work of Kingmakers shortly, but I will tell you in advance that my visit to see this organization in action was unforgettable. In my 25 plus years of work as a teacher and education leader, I have seen hundreds of classrooms and dozens of programs. What I saw in Oakland was different. The work of Kingmakers had clearly created a sense of belonging for black male students, offering deeply relevant curriculum, an engaged community, and authentic support. The students I spoke to were energized and confident and felt heard and supported by the adults surrounding them. By listening carefully to what black male students experienced, needed, and wanted, Kingmakers created supports that were redefining education to create a more equitable system. I came home totally inspired by what I had seen. Today's program is a great illustration of exactly how the Alliance's mission works. When SPS made plans to also open an Office of African American Male Achievement back in 2018, the Alliance shared that news with the philanthropic community and worked in partnership with both the district and philanthropy to come up with a plan for investing in this work. The office officially opened up shop in August of 2019, and to date, the Alliance has raised $2.3 million to support their longevity and success toward a $3 million goal. Thank you so much to all of our philanthropic partners who have supported this work. Seattle Public Schools had incredible insight and vision in creating the Office of African American Male Achievement, and the hard work of this strategy begins with Dr. Mia Williams, her team, and all of the staff at Seattle Public Schools. 
but we can all play a role in supporting their efforts and in supporting all strategies that increase racial equity in our school district. None of this work is a quick fix. We're playing a long game, and today's program represents years of engagement, innovation, and investment from partners across the community and the country. I'm delighted that the Alliance has been able to play a role in supporting that path, and we're committed to continuing to support this work moving forward. Great work demands great partners, and we are so fortunate to have Dr. Brent Jones leading our district as superintendent during these challenging times. A lifelong Seattle citizen, seasoned educator, committed community leader, and action-oriented change maker, I'm so grateful for his partnership. At this time, please welcome to the podium my friend and partner, Dr. Brent Jones. I'm honored to welcome you to one of the most important events of the year. This is one of the few opportunities I have to acknowledge the partnership between Seattle's business and philanthropic community, the Alliance for Education and Seattle Public Schools. The financial support for public education is important and it's valued. Your financial support tells us that you see our schools, our students and families and staff as part of Seattle's broader community and that you share our mission. I'm from Seattle. I went to Seattle Public Schools during desegregation. My mother taught at Seattle Public Schools. My daughter is a recent graduate of Seattle Public Schools. Our mission at Seattle Public Schools is deeply personal to me. Our mission is formidable. And at this time in history, public schools have become many public health agencies, climate change agents, and purveyors of technology. Yet, we manage all these challenges but we never lose sight of our mission, high quality teaching and learning. Seattle Public Schools is improving teaching and learning right now by unapologetically targeting the, targeting the academic success of students furthest from educational justice with an emphasis on our black boys and teens. We expect them to graduate Seattle ready, competitive in their chosen fields, great citizens and willing to serve others and having a strong self identity they are ready to access the opportunities right here in Seattle and beyond. We expect them to go to Harvard or Howard, whatever their choice may be. If we can make the system work to meet the educational needs of African-American boys and teens predictably and consistently, then we can say our system is working. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce one of the most foremost leaders in the country on this strategic approach to education. Our keynote speaker is Chris Chapman, CEO of King Makers of Oakland. He, is an, he has an award-winning nonprofit that supports school districts around the country to improve the educational and life outcomes for black boys and young men. His collaboration and mentorship has informed our own Office of African American Male Achievement and the King Makers program at SPS, and we are grateful for his leadership. Help me welcome my friend, Chris Chapman. Thank you. Greetings and thank you, Dr. Brent Jones. You are the embodiment of black male achievement. Let us work to hold you with love, light, and grace as you lead Seattle Public Schools through one of the most extraordinary moments in our lifetime as we emerge and evolve through virtual learning and the multiple pandemics of COVID and systemic and structural racism into a new future of possibility, opportunity, and equality. I was blessed to meet you back in January 2016 when a powerful and di diverse group of cross-functional intergenerational leaders came to Oakland to experience the transformative work we were leading at the time with, within Oakland Unified School District. From 2016 to 2019, Seattle aligned the people and programs, the city and district, philanthropy and business to till the soil and take a stance for improving the educational and life outcomes for black boys from kindergarten through 12th grade. Salute to each of you who played a role for Seattle to move from talk to action. Y'all coordinated, collaborated, and launched the Office of African American Male Achievement in 2019. Going from a moment to a movement takes intention, will, communication, coordination, and commitment, knowing that systems of oppression self-correct. Who could have predicted that since you launched AMA in 2019, that you would then go through two superintendents and a pandemic? 
These systems that we look to redesign and dismantle outlive all individuals. Please remember that this is legacy work. We, we should all know who the three, the five, the 10 young people who you are preparing and passing the baton to for when you leave or transition. This next part of your journey will be one of your most beautiful struggles. So in my brief talk today, I would like to draw from our most profound form of intelligence, AI, not artificial intelligence, rather our ancestral intelligence. With that, I would like to acknowledge our First Nation brothers and sisters recognizing the sacred land we are blessed to live on. Next, we know that now more than ever, we must move in a way that is bigger than any one of us, and that is our values, principles, and processes, embracing the value of Ubuntu. I am because we are, we are because I am. May the circle be unbroken. Kingmakers of Oakland is a social enterprise born out of Oakland Unified School District's Office of African American Male Achievement back in 2010. Kingmakers is committed to transforming education systems and building the capacity of people to design and implement the conditions and culture to improve educational life outcomes for black boys. We believe educational transformation is possible. Making progress on equity requires us to have conversations about race and systemic oppression, not to lay blame, but to design more equitable systems. Kingmakers is guided by five core values, love. Our approach is first and foremost rooted in love, love of self, community, culture, and much more. African-centered connection and understanding of our history and her story, community, humanity, and soul is key in shaping a positive black identity, especially within an academic context. Collective will. The Calvary is not coming to save black boys. As members and allies of the black community, we all have a responsibility to create change. Partnership. This work doesn't scale or grow without partners. We are committed to collaboration that mutually empowers both parties in our journey. And last but definitely not least, King-centered. Black boys will always be co-creators of this work. Their voices are valued and respected as much as adults. What are the share shared values of SPS, deal, philanthropy, and community? Coherence, calibration, and alignment around your values will allow you to move through ambiguity, ego, positional authority, transition, and crisis. King Kingmakers also operates from two core assumptions. Our educational system was not created to educate all children equally and to high standards, and therefore results in inequity by design. The policies, practices, and cultural representations, or our ways of knowing and communicating what is normal, right, and valued in schools advantages some groups of students and disadvantages others. Having reviewed our values and core assumptions, we want to lift up our design principles, knowing that the answers to the complex problems we seek are not answered or solved through transactional linear processes. The opportunity we now have is to align our values, principles, and processes. Kingmakers of Oakland believes in the following design principles. Aligned with our core value of love, transforming systems requires that we are rooted in unconditional love for self, others, and black boys. Historical context matters. We are practicing fugitive pedagogy, knowing who and whose we are, and lifting up the cultural prosperity and legacy of the African diaspora, Rasa studies, indigenous studies, and API studies will provide a balance to the prevailing narrative of Eurocentricity and whiteness. Radical inclusion, let us remix the classic Wu-Tang Clan song, Cream, Cash Rules Everything Around Me, Dream, to dream, excuse me, uh, data rules everything around me. Let the data show whose voices are missing, who is not experiencing belonging, a sense of cultural identity, who are those furthest from opportunity and move them outside into the center. There are only so many seats at the table, so let's move from the table and be seated around the circle, allowing the circle to expand and grow as opposed to being limited by a select few. Ask yourself, who haven't we heard from today? Have we heard from the children? Have we heard from our kings? Process is the product. The traditional academic indicators will continue to reflect how the system is broken and designed to do what it was designed to do. Remember, the processes for a successful educational system is based on how you define education. Do you define the goal of education as education is liberation or education is compliance? If it's liberation, then what are the processes that we introduce practice and develop that lead to the liberation of a child's mind, body, and spirit. 
Have you decided as a community what a school system that has no equity, inequity looks like? What is a system where black boys and girls are thriving, feel like, sound like? Once we describe, identify, and paint a picture of what we are all striving for, then reverse engineer from the vision and identify the processes that you will need to actualize your vision. Designing at the margins ensures that those students, family, staff, and community furthest from opportunity are the co-designers of the work that will impact them most. Start with yourself. This work requires daily reflection and a commitment to the necessary mirror and window work that will allow you to grow, heal, learn, reflect, and listen. Remember that programs make promises, people keep them, and the longer you stay in these systems, the more you can lose sight of who and whose you are, and you end up modeling and mirroring the very things that you once spoke out and fought against. Systems have a way of castifying your spirit, Remember, you buy, if you buy into the rat race, win or lose, you're still a rat. Stay committed to your personal transformation so you can hold the system accountable and keep the main thing the main thing, our kings and queens. Seed power. Take the E out of ego so you can go forward. Remember, the higher up you go in these systems, the less connected you become to the students you are trying to reach. Make the invisible visible. Have the audacity to live up and shine light on voices and experiences of those who are not being heard. Share the voices of your kings. Create a conspiracy of care. How do you build a movement around the work so it doesn't change with every season, superintendent, or funding cycle? Speak the future into being. Design the future. We have to be able to have a shared vision and then reverse engineer from that vision. How do we shine a light on the promise of practice as opposed to the problem of practice? Healing the fish while treating the toxic eco ecosystem. Your Office of African American Male Achievement is the solution. We like to use the metaphor of fish in the pond. The fish represent our kings and the school environment is the pond. The current pond is polluted, which means that school culture and condition prevent our kings from achieving. The polluted pond did not happen overnight. So our first step is inoculating the fish while we clean up the pond by transforming the adults in our system. This takes time. We must continue working with the adults to change the culture and the conditions within schools themselves through policy advocacy to change social policy and practices to address the suspension and expulsions of African-American male students and to ensure that schools are intentional about the outcomes of these students. Hire and train teachers to enable teachers to have a better cultural understanding of black male students and therefore better able to engage them family and community engagement to ensure that parents and community are active in students' education and are empowered to advocate for and support their children. Narrative change to encourage the media to report on positive stories about black male students and to evolve school curriculum from a white narrative to one that reflects the contributions of African Americans. Cleaning up the pond takes a long time, so we also need to inoculate the fish by working directly with our kings. SPS AAMA does this by engaging, encouraging, and empowering African-American male students through building self-esteem and a sense of belonging through cultural identity, the manhood development program. Classes are the foundation of AMA's work with African-American male students. The classes are taught by African-American male teachers who form deep relationships with the students and help them navigate through school and life. Students develop an understanding of who they are as African-American males, develop a brotherhood among classmates, and boost their academic achievement through academic discourse and reading culturally relevant texts. Mentoring, AMA empowers older students to meet and mentor younger students one-on-one, -on -one, as well as group mentoring through story nights, benefiting both the younger mentee while building the leadership, confidence, and sense of purpose of the mentor. We also facilitate intergenerational mentoring and community building through our Man Up conferences, the Upset the Setup, the Lab Tech conferences, and our Breaking Bread and Co Crossroads podcast series on Instagram. Out of classroom experiences, AMA's field trips expand students' perspectives and allows them to envision future possibilities and goals. We must continue to increase opportunities to lead and advocate. AMA's Leadership Council comprises a group of young kings who have the opportunity to advocate and be the ambassador for issues related to educating black male students within Seattle Public Schools, the city of Seattle, and this nation. The six key drivers towards systemic change for black boys and for all SPS students is as follows. 
rewriting curriculum from preschool through 12th grade that lifts up the cultural prosperity and legacy of black, brown, API, and indigenous people in math, science, language arts, and social studies. Increasing the, the recruitment, training, and retention of black male teachers within Seattle Public Schools. Increasing the voices and experiences of our kings by centering their voices and increasing the opportunities for them to lead within the classroom to the boardroom. Now more than ever, we must engage our families and communities to work in concert and collaboration with our teachers, schools, and administrators. Narrative change is, a key, is, is key as whoever controls the narrative has the power. How are we elevating the voices of our kings from within the classroom to the boardroom, ensuring that we are building asset-based mindsets and narratives around black boys and men? Six, how are we building durable systems and structures that support and empower our kings for decades to come? The power is in the policy. I would like to leave you all with a few questions to ponder. The stories that you are telling now are primarily adult-centered stories. If you want to cohere your work around some shared action or goal, then we must center youth voice. How do you understand what young people are experiencing and the stories that young people are telling right now? How do you understand how black boys are experiencing school, life, one another, their community right now? How do our kings and queens experience the multiple pandemics? How do you understand the demands and needs of, of your kings? How are you co-designing in service of creating a system that is one they feel they belong to and are part of and can influence? Remember, the next generation can speak for themselves and they can accelerate your system's growth if they are co-designing with you. All we have to do is make room around the circle and practice our values, principles, and processes and stay committed to the process as the process is the product. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris, for your partnership, your leadership, your brilliance, and your dedication. We're so glad you could be with us today and so grateful for your support for Seattle Public Schools. At this time, it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Mia Tuan, Dean of the College of Education at the University of Washington. Dean Tuan is a leader and scholar who has dedicated her life's work to understanding and encouraging racial equity in education. And I'm so honored to welcome her to today's event. Dr. Tuan, thank you so much for being here and for facilitating our town hall today. All right, thank you, Lisa. So welcome to the town hall portion of our luncheon today. Um, we've got a great panel here ready to talk with each other and to answer questions that you might have for us as well. If you have questions, please use the chat box on Zoom or on YouTube and we will, I'll start with a few uh, introductory questions of my own, but then we'll start to, to use, uh, address the questions that you ask. All right, so let me start with some introductions. Lemanuel Donaldson senior at Rainier Beach High School and member of the AAMA Student Leadership Council and an aspiring high school teacher in history. Dr. Mia Williams, Assistant Superintendent of the Office of African American Male Achievement at Seattle Public Schools and just to take a pride moment, a graduate of the University of Washington College of Education, L4L6. And Chris Chapman, the visionary behind Kingmakers of Oakland. Welcome, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, in my role as Dean, I'm really interested in learning more and understanding how a strategy like the Office of African American Male Achievement is going to make a long-term difference in Seattle. So the questions that I have to get us warmed up are all framed around that. Lee Manuel, as a student deeply involved in this work, I'd love to hear how you see the office making a difference in your life and the life of other black boys and young men. Um, it definitely, it makes you feel good, you know. The office when I first started, I didn't I didn't realize a lot of stuff that that was happening around me. You know, early in my high school uh, career, I kind of struggled a lot. And I, after my sophomore year, I had met Kev, and Kev kind of put me on with with AMA in the office, and it like it, it gave me kind of a purpose yeah. of what I wanted to do in life. That's kind of when I found out I wanted to be a teacher, and I kind of learned about the history of myself. So it definitely it definitely helped me to where I am today. I don't know where I you know where I'd be without it. That's, yeah. that's beautiful, thank you. 
Mia. You've served in Seattle Public Schools for nearly three decades. What inspired you to lead the office of AMA, and what impact are you seeing so far? You know, um, the privilege and honor to get to lead um, the office of AMA is, is its alignment to my core commitment. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say moral obligation that I have, that everybody else should have, to our black male students and black female students within the system um, to make sure that they get the education they deserve and to um, really pour into um, educators, the community, everybody wrapping their arms around, making sure that, um, that they recognize the brilliance of our black boys and teens and the excellence that they deserve. Yeah. So um, getting the opportunity to do that and then knowing that our kings that we call refer to our black males um, and families know what they need to thrive and getting to be a part of shifting the power back to our kings and to our families to help us lead to solutions that are going to make sure that they get what they need to the right conditions are set in place so getting to be a part of that and coming alongside of that um, is just what makes me excited to be the leader of this office well, you are the right leader for this time. Thank you. Thank you. So, Chris, I loved your keynote. Oh, I, I you. want the remarks <laughs> because it's, it, it was dense, and you laid out a framework and a theory of action, and, and then, the, to your point, the long game. What, that this is a long game, and, and it's not about the individuals. We all have a role to play, but it's, it's the work overall. I'd love to hear from you more. As somebody who's been doing this work now for many years, what are those main lessons that you've learned, and what keeps you going? Wow. Well, uh, I mean, what keeps me going definitely is um, is the passion and the alignment with my purpose. Knowing that what I experienced um, yeah, as a black boy in public schools in the '70s and '80s, a lot hasn't changed. Um, and, and so that just uh, definitely motivates me uh, to get up in the morning and, and fight that good fight. Um, I think things what we're fighting you know, in the spirit of the movement. Now, it's excitement that it is a movement, though, that um, I think under the multiple pandemics, it kind of rocked this country that lifted up some things that some of us already knew uh, and revealed some things that either folks were in denial or just didn't want necessarily take a look at. Mm -hmm. And that was the egregious inequity um, that was happening in public schools. And so um, I think with that, there is this need and desire to figure out how do we begin to redesign schools in service of those students who historically have they they haven't served and so what we found it definitely takes extraordinary leadership uh it takes a strategy of internal and external mm -hmm. um alignment knowing that uh one of the the predictive factors in these systems is the high turnover rate of teachers principals mm -hmm. and superintendents mm -hmm. and so how does a community set forth a set of values mm -hmm. principles and processes that knowing the people will come and go yeah. but our children you know are going to be there from from the start and so um really staying in the work not in three to five year strategic plans but really in in kind of generational life cycles so it's beginning to think about kind of 10-year increments like yeah. what does it what does it look like sound like to get a community but to, to think about shared language shared value shared practice how do you calibrate and coordinate an entire system um that allows for all children to be successful, but those furthest from opportunity, you have the audacity to center a set of strategies. And so uh, for us, what we're tracking is, I mean, alignment of will, organization, mm -hmm. um, and the fact now that when we started in 2010, there was one district, but now you have some 20 plus mm -hmm. districts now from a broader national learning community that can leverage the genius from Seattle to Oakland, to Atlanta, to Maryland. And so uh, excited to see that there, that there really is movement headed in the right direction um, to disrupt those predictive factors um, that we all have come too familiar with. So thank you for being the visionary behind that movement and for, for being, part, being such an ally and a supporter in Seattle. Oh, right on, thank you. All right, so at this point, we're, are we ready to have a conversation with others? Yep. Yes. Okay, so now we're gonna look to your questions. Let's see. How can businesses and donors, or excuse me, what can businesses and donors do to help support students furthest from educational justice? Who feels like taking up that question? I mean, I can start and then I think Chris can jump in. Go um, for it. For his time. Um, 
Well, I just would first like to thank all of the um, philanthropic donors and businesses that have already invested in our black boys and teens in Seattle um, by helping support um, lift up many of the initiatives and movements that we have coming out of our office. Um, one, supporting the Student Leadership yeah. Council so that, again, they're the leaders, they're the ones that are going to create transformation in the system. Yeah. So helping continue to support that. And that the fact that they share their intellectual property all the time, we need to make sure that we're taking care of mm -hmm. that because it's not free that they're giving their brilliance to us. So I think mm -hmm. that um, opportunities for us to be able to partner with community-based organizations within our system, black-led community-based organizations, because they can help fill the gaps within our systems to make sure that our kings get what they need and deserve. Mm. Um, I also think that um, we got to continue to grow. We got to be lifelong learners. There's opportunity to um, produce in professional growth of myself and my wonderful team of AMA um, as we partner with Kingmakers of Oakland. Um, we have rich, we partner with what, five to six different districts where we continue to learn and grow mm -hmm. to do better um, by our our babies, I like to call them. Um, so those are just um, three ways that I would like to talk about it, but I think just continuing to uh, uh, um, invest and believe in the brilliance and excellence of our black boys and teens in Seattle is what we need them to um, pour their to pour their investment yeah. into. Thank you. Okay, I think this next question that I see is is for Chris, and it's it, it's a question: of How long did it take in Oakland to see the data or positive outcomes from the work to support Black male students? Yeah, I mean, when great, did you know it was working? Great question. <laughs> given uh, in my first six years uh, as the executive director of African American Male Achievement. I went through five superintendents, and I would say uh -huh. uh, it was probably at the third superintendent around um, his second year where the data began to show up in reduction of chronic absenteeism, reduction in suspension rates, mm. um, the cohort graduation rate for the first time started to begin to climb upward. Mm. Um, so I would say it, you know, it's kind of that four to six years is mm. when we began to see all of these different ways we were mm -hmm. approaching the system, knowing that curriculum in isolation of addressing the whole system is necessary yet insufficient. And yeah. so this idea of, all right, let's inoculate black boys while we begin yeah. to really address all of the other departments and gain cohesion with the system. So that, I'd say between four to six was kind of the sweet spot um, uh, when we saw data a diverse data, both quantitative and qualitative data, um, that this movement this um, was really impacting both the kings within the school and in our classes, but the entire city. Because yeah. um, by the s seventh year, we had started to create the system, structure, culture, and condition where actually there was a direct impact on incarceration rates for black boys. And that was mm -hmm. a county indicator mm -hmm. that when you get school right, it actually does mm -hmm. impact juvenile justice. Yeah. And so we saw a 40% 40, 40 mm. uh, reduction in African-American male occupancy of the county juvenile justice center. Why? Because we weren't suspending black yeah. boys. We weren't kicking them out of school. We were engaging them with engaged instruction and the whole host of activities. But So four, so four to six. <laughs> and then the program is now 10 years, 11 years old? So, well, the work within Oakland still stays yeah, within yeah. Oakland. Now, um, you know, Kingmakers of Oakland is its own 501c3. Yeah. Um, and so now, you know, the office is 12 years in existence. Yeah. And there's African American male achievement, female achievement, Latino student yeah. achievement, Asian Pacific, Pacific Islander uh, achievement. What we did substantiate that um, a one size fit all yeah. strategy to get ensure that all children graduate yeah. college career it's and community gonna ready yeah. is not going to yeah. fit. And you have to differentiate mm -hmm. to um, for each of these groups that the data showed we're not getting their needs mm -hmm. met. And so what we've seen as a whole being a, uh, through AMA, it's given permission now on how we uh, begin to target uh, not only financial supports, but what are those strategies differentiated for some of our other marginalized communities. Uh, and that was the work I was blessed to lead, um, both as the executive director of AMA and then went yeah, on to be yeah. the deputy chief of equity. But this does take time. And let me acknowledge, it's not a plug and play. So what we did mm -hmm. in Oakland is on you know, values, principles, and processes is kind of what Perennial. we lift yeah. up. Yeah. But San Francisco is different than Seattle, yeah. is different than Antioch, is different than Kent. Um, and so it's you know really being able to contextualize these values and processes within you know, the landscape of Seattle, yeah. for example. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I see the next question is for Emmanuel. Tell us about the Student Leadership Council and what kind of impact do you feel that it's having? Um, I feel like it's having a good impact. I know when I started, they had just got off of uh, helping helping the school district with the grading policy during yeah. COVID. So it, I, they said if you if there was no fails, if you you either passed or you got it incomplete, yeah. which is you'd finish it later. So I, they had just finished that. So when I got in, I had already seen what they were already doing. So I, it, it made me feel good. And then when I when I got on to there, we uh, we did the plus program to help with math, mm -hmm. and math was one of the mm -hmm. things I struggled with for my whole life. So doing that, it, it really helped me, and it made me feel good because I'm I'm helping the next generation mm -hmm. behind me. So we we helped with that, and we also did the. Uh, Teacher, teachers putting their hands on students, stuff like that, trying to trying to uh, bring that down, bring the mm -hmm. numbers of that down. So I helped with that. So it, you know, it made me feel good. And then with uh, the impact, I I feel like I'm having a good impact because I'm I'm showing that our voices can be heard and we can do yes, something absolutely. about the about the things in our, our life. Thank you. So this next question is a, is a bigger question, but I'm actually going to tilt it also to Lee Manuel. The question is, how can districts increase the number of black male teachers? And you've already said you would love to be a yeah. history teacher. So I guess my, my question would be, what, what do you need to see continuing to change and happen so that you'll feel good going into this career? Um, I, think, I think a way to increase the numbers is, is just something you overlook is just word of mouth. You know, yeah. I, I don't. I, you don't really hear people uh, asking if you want to be a teacher or trying to convince people to be a teacher. And I feel like that's the way how I got into it. I had a history teacher who, who really checked mm -hmm. up on me and, and kept me on the right path. And that's and that's kind of the reason I want to be. It's not. It's more or less not the not the teaching, but it's the being there for somebody and yeah. and, and helping them and to go along with the uh, history, teach somebody the real history. You know, in our past they've tried to. You know, we'll go around the truth, mm -hmm. and I want you know I want to bring my next generation the truth, the the real truth about our people and, and their people. Yeah. So, yeah. What what was the name of your history teacher? Mr. Reed, Curtis Reed. I still have him. Curtis to this Reed. Day. Shout out to Curtis <laughs> Reed. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So next question is from Mia. What are you most proud of so far in this work and in the office? Well, I mean. Emmanuel, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I first got to just say to our kings, shout out to them. Um, they are, like I said, they're going to be the ones changing um, our system, transforming the system. They have been in supporting in person us going back into schools, um, just really making sure that we're centered. Um, I just remember King saying to me in the past, like, you guys talk to everybody else around us, but we're the ones experiencing learning. So mm -hmm. I think I would just talk about the efforts and just the heart that they put into really trying to transform the system, as Emmanuel talked about, for um, for his brothers that are going to follow mm -hmm. him, and making sure from a preschool through our college and mm -hmm. launch to college and career readiness that our babies are going to be on the right track and getting what they need. So that I think that I would say that is my most um, proud thing, and I and and just to go along with that, that we now are one in ten. Um, black males within 50 schools in Seattle Public Schools are having access to some sort of mentoring, mm -hmm. whether it's within Kingmakers, it's in Rising Sun Extended, can, um, Kingmakers of Seattle Extended um, Virtual. Uh, we have these different opportunities that we are creating that, which is something that they've asked for. Many of them said that they didn't have a black male teacher when and they're already a mm -hmm. senior in high school, right? Um, they also just need to have this I identity safety, right, and being in space. So th those two things, but number one is always the kings and what they're doing. Love it. Okay, so our next question is, in Seattle, so many of our black youth are from immigrant families. Have you found different needs for those communities as compared with non-immigrant youngsters? Mm -hmm. It's a great question. It is, <laughs> particularly me, <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. Um, hello, John. <laughs> so um, that is a big question, and um, I would just like to say that definitely um, within our different affinity groups, but what we've seen is, is that um, within our SLC, we have immigrant um, males, we have from the diaspora, right? And so they're, mm -hmm. they're sharing their brilliance together, but at the end of the day, their experiences of inequity and harm that our system has imparted in the past has been the same. And um, what 
we are really proud about making sure that we're creating opportunities for all of our babies to learn about the different experiences and um, come together and be in community um, in those spaces so that we are making sure that that the individual student, individual king gets what they need. And I think that agency that they are having are lifting up um, ways that they get to be within, to get to be their best selves. And so that's what I would just say about that, that yes, um, we want to make sure that they have language acquisition if mm -hmm. that's a need that they have. But I think it's really about seeing Emmanuel, seeing who he is and what he needs to be his best and having his brotherhood that with his other mm -hmm. um, peers um, has been really powerful to help uplift whatever they need. So that's what I would um, say to that. Thank you. Chris or Emmanuel, anything you, you'd like to add? about how stirring in immigrant identities and immigrant and refugee experiences complicates oh, not I think the it complements. Uh, I mean, just, it yeah. just brings more texture and beauty. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think yeah, culture is dynamic. There's no one size fits all for black folk. Uh, and so I think <laughs> in the spirit of we see you and we offer that mm -hmm. place and space. And, you know, Mia, I think Mia answered the question very well. Um, but in this country, how we experience blackness, mm -hmm. that doesn't, there's, mm -hmm. you know, they, there, on that level, uh, there's no discrimination based on that. Like we, you know, uh, so I think though, how do you engage folks throughout the diaspora to make sure that they see, see uh, they're heard, valued, that their culture, no matter if they're from the Caribbean or they're from the yeah. motherland or yeah. they're from Detroit or Seattle, yeah. um, that they feel part of community. Um, and so, yeah, with that is being able to listen, uh, is being able to engage, mm -hmm. encourage, and empower. Um, and so that's the work that I believe me and team's been leading here um, and the beauty and opportunity that we have to make connections um, within our school systems because a lot of times the system will have us fighting each other yeah. as opposed to seeing the humanity in all of us and so I think departments like AMA provide that opportunity for folks to come together, learn, heal, mm -hmm. laugh, enjoy, and build. Absolutely, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a f bunch of questions coming now so I just mm -hmm. want to take a moment to make sure I capture it. Uh, so, Emmanuel, this question is for you. We're inspired by your leadership. When you become a teacher, what things are you going to replicate from teachers you've had in the past, and what things are you going to change? Um, for sure, the relationship. I feel like that's the most important thing. You're, uh, if you really think about it, you're at, you're at school most of your life, most of your younger life. So, you, I, yeah. I want that to be a safe place for people to learn and for anything else. So, that's definitely one thing I want you know yeah. to carry on. And some things I want to change is just my, my style of teaching. You know, the, everybody learns in a different way. There's there's no mm -hmm. like, one set way of learning. So I want to make make sure everybody I, I can make uh, teach everybody in their own you know separate way. So that's definitely definitely something I want to do with teaching. So looking ahead, what can you imagine your style of teaching is going to be? Um, fun. I feel like You're be a fun teacher. Okay. <laughs> I feel that's like right. learning learning should be fun. Learning okay. should be something you want to do, I love not it. something you have to do. So I, that's that's why I want to be fun. fun I, love I feel it. like it's a good word. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Mia, what are your plans? What plans do you have for the year ahead? Well, personal as well as professional. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, um, no, I, I won't talk about the personal ones, but I will, um, I'm excited that um, we were able to be in community with our black families and our kings last year. So we have a listen and learn um, findings that will be coming out shortly within here in the next month. Okay. But our plans are, are guided by what they have shared with us uh, that their needs are. Because again, mm -hmm. it's not about me. It is about what they already know that they need to thrive. And so I'm excited about that. So one of the things that we are gonna have next uh, to complement our SLC is have our Black Family Leadership Council mm. from that's going to represent Seattle Public Schools, which we're super excited about um, them coming alongside of the council to really push forward um, transformation in our system. Um, I'm excited about um, we we have mentoring all the way down into third third grade, and I have yeah, families that are still asking questions. Well, what about my kindergartner? So how do we create this um, P? Um, 12, so yeah. that's something that we're working on is to creating space with that. Um, I'm excited about partnerships with um, a lot of uh, our community-based organizations, um, Sankofa Academy, just to, I could just mm -hmm. name a bunch of them that are coming to help us enhance um, the offerings and experiences of our Kings today. So um, I think that 
we always talk about we're committed to listening and how do we act and I would like to say act deliver and then repeat because this is ongoing work mm -hmm. that as we continue to um, make sure that we're always listening because it's not about me it's about our kings mm -hmm. and their families and the community already knows what they need so mm -hmm. that's what I'm excited about for this year what's ahead of us so there's a follow-up question which is how has COVID impacted your ability to 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 make uh, to, to follow through and to to make right on on the your goals right I mean COVID like I said is a huge thing but we have to realize that prior to COVID our system wasn't designed for our kings and so I want to just make sure that the things that I was keeping me up at night and wanting to wake up to be a part of the transformation of um, is still hit our kings have we just went online to make sure that the kings have a space to be in brotherhood with each other mm -hmm. and yes and it was so wonderful to be in person now back to be in but um, they've always needed identity safety mm -hmm. they've always needed to have a sense of belonging all of those things are part of um, that yes making sure that they have like the basic needs um, is definitely a part of it but I think that the things that we're trying to systemically um, change and transform within our system are things um, that as brother Chris mentioned that the pandemics have just mm -hmm. highlighted mm -hmm. but those things were already mm -hmm. something that we needed to do different so I would just say that um, they have just risen to the occasion they are just out there and we've just figured out how to make things work to really just push forward regardless of the pandemics thank you so our, our next question is for Lee Manuel. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about passing versus learning, and what does that mean to you, and why? Okay, so um, in in school you're you're taught that you know A's and B's is what you need to get just for life, um, and with that you you try to you try to cheat, and you know because if you can't learn if you can't learn it you have to you still have to get mm -hmm. the grade at the end of the day. So a lot of the time you're trying to cheat your way through just so you can get the grade and you're not really learning the real content. Yeah. And I feel like what, what's the point of you even if you even doing it if you're not really learning it. So for me I just think that with the ACTs and the, um, and the um, SATs, SATs that we're like what is, what is the point? What am I really learning? Mm -hmm. I'd rather learn the real content and actually you know get it in my brain yeah. than just cheat my way through because there's no real point in that. So. Really, I just want I want school to be more about learning than just passing. Yeah, deep learning, yeah. meaningful learning. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, next question is for Chris. Can you please share what you've learned over the past decade of leading this work? Uh, pitfalls to avoid, what you wish you knew or had known when you began the work? Wow, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's a loaded question. That's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> Which is all love. Um, engage instruction is the number one way uh, to prevent issues of discipline uh, and to help our kings take their crowns at their pocket. Uh, we all benefit from learning and updating our formulas around engaged instruction. Um, doubling down our efforts, in particular coming out of the pandemic, um, if we continue to use these traditional academic metrics, race-based, targeted, uh, culturally responsive strategies are dead in the water because the metrics are calibrated to Eurocentricity and white supremacy. Um, we have to calibrate and tune new metrics that actually, I, mm -hmm. I posit, if a king knows who and whose he is um, and can speak for self, which requires literacy and math and science, all these different areas, you can accelerate learning. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do think systems want to reset and go back to mm -hmm. these traditional pedagogical practices that don't that aren't weighted to that sense of belonging um, and cultural identity. So that is uh, so I just share the opportunities lean into kids. Kings don't care what you know until they know that you care. Lemanuel just said it himself. Um, so to the degree of we can accelerate that sense of belonging um, throughout. I think is really important. Um, other aspects of the work, I would say, is don't change horses in the middle of the stream. Tower of Power, Oakland Band was like, we are, every time we get a new superintendent, or um, you know, people want to change. When there's certain things that are consistent in the system, that as systems change, like how do you keep the main thing the main thing mm -hmm. and center the voices of black 
boys, black girls, and non-binary royalty. That should be devoid of whatever superintendent's coming in, or principal, or senior leader, or board member. Um, we have had a legacy in this country of marginalizing black children. That's been the narrative of public school education in this country. Um, so I just, I say all that to say that is not gonna, uh, we're not gonna dismantle that in a three to five year strategic mm -hmm. plan. So how do we see a generation of children through one set of strategies? <laughs> I think we owe our children that. Yeah. Um, you know, the narrative of the promise as opposed to the problem, I mean, on so many times we shoot our, ourselves in the foot by not lifting up the beauty and brilliance mm -hmm. of the young, you know, Lemaniel talked about the, 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 the teacher that had an impact on why he wants to teach, on the Emory's that are teaching in alternative schools that are radically changing the lives of, uh, of young people. Why aren't we lifting up uh, the work of Kevin and Adam? Of, we have all that we need, but the narrative tends to focus on the problem mm -hmm. as opposed to the promise. And so there has to be that tension of how do we lift up and celebrate that ain't the Calvary ain't come, Kingmakers ain't coming to Seattle. Like, we support, but I'm going to hop on a plane and head right back to, to Oakland, right? So we have what we need. How do we shine a light, though, on the Mias and the Quiches, on Anthony Shoecrafts mm -hmm. and everybody else, the Alliance for Ed, the funders that are, like, mm -hmm. that, I feel, is the beautiful struggle. Um, and as we fuel and change the narrative, mm -hmm. I also think um, you prime people on the potential of where we're all going. Um, the other piece I'd just say in the spirit of the internal external strategy, um, like this is an opportunity for the city of Seattle to align the district, but also with philanthropy. And I think the Alliance for Education and the business community have to ask themselves, as a result of our collective eff efforts, how many more black males are graduating uh, college? How many more black males are getting internships and externships? Yeah. How many more, like, as a result of each, like, and we need to hold ourselves of account, accountable, the system does, but not in the isolation of the city. Um, and so, I mean, I'll start with that, knowing there's a whole lot of goodness I can speak to the journey, but um, keep the main thing the main thing. Yeah. And I want you all to know, like, you all are a beacon for this country. Um, you all mm. are doing some extraordinary work coming out of one of the most extraordinary times in our lifetime. Don't let go now. Mm. Like, don't change, lean in. And the folks that should be equal to your superintendent, your board of education, your senior leadership are kings. Every decision that impacts the, the, the life of a, a black child, black children should be at the decision making table. Any assessment that we're assessing the efficacy of black children, black children should be evaluating, assessing the adults that are teaching mm -hmm. them. And so those are some of the things I would lift up in the short time that I Ooh, have. That's a good <laughs> list. Thank you very much. Right on. So I think we'll soon coming to the end of our time. So panelists, anything that you'd like to add or say as we as we get ready to close out? Um, don't let just don't let this just be a one time thing with those things we're saying. Don't let this just go over your head. Actually use these words and use what we're saying and actually put it into put it into, into something. practice. Yeah. yeah. Do something with it. So yeah, that's what I'd like to say. Thank you, Emmanuel. How about you, Mia? And I think I would just like to leave with that. Um, this this is everybody's moral obligation uh, investing into, I love that what Chris said, our royalty of our, um, of our babies, um, that what that means is, is that it's just not the office of AMA. It's not just the kings. Everybody needs to do their part and see their commitment and investment into making sure that our babies thrive mm. and not just succeed, but thrive. Mm. And so what are you doing every day to ensure that that's happening? And, and, and we need to heal and we need to, um, you know, repair the harm that's done and don't go backwards. And how are you gonna be a part of that village that's gonna help with this thrusting forward? Thank you. Chris. Yeah, I'd say, you know, we're planting trees, uh, excuse me, we're planting seeds that will grow to be trees that will provide shade for children we haven't even envisioned yet. Um, and so this work takes time and just double clicking on everything that um, my colleague said here is that you know programs make promises, people keep them. Uh, we know that the, this work is based on relationships and relationships go at the speed of trust. So we have to stop calling each other out, but how do we call each other in? Mm. You know, how do we bring more healing into all spaces? Um, yeah, and as we go, our children will go. So I just, you know, we gotta look to each other um, and not at each other. 
Um, and, mm. and I just, I, I'm excited about the possibilities. I'm honored mm -hmm. to be in your community. Uh, and as much as I can be a thought partner as your cousin in, in Oakland or, you know, your brother from another uh, mother, I'm, I'm down as so many across the country. But um, proud of um, the Alliance, proud of Lemanuel, proud of Sister Mia, mm -hmm. and, uh, and proud of Seattle Public Schools for keeping the main thing the main thing. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, panelists, for, for taking the time. Um, I'm going to take away beautiful struggle and the fact that we're all we're all arms locked right in the beautiful struggle That's right. and I appreciate for you as a as a visitor to our city just reminding us that we are doing good work it's hard work but we're doing the right work That's right. and we don't have to do it alone That's so right. thank you so much right. all right thank you thank you audience for your questions and for joining us today Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sherry Williams, and it's been a privilege to be the chair of the Alliance for Education. I want to give thanks and gratitude for you turning in today, tuning in today. We at the Alliance appreciate your attendance and your participation. But first, I want to just share some thoughts about what I've heard today. Um, our children are kings and queens and, and offshoots of royalty. But so are the moms and the pops and the guardians and the grandpops and the grandmoms. Those are also the kings and, and queens that invest in our community and invest in us to be able to guide our children and to provide them with the power to move forward. So I just want to thank, I took a lot from that and it was just very emotional to be able to, 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 to ride that wave with this group. So thank you so much. It's been an incredible opportunity to listen, learn, and apply the principles um, of this discussion with Chris Chapman, uh, Dr. Mia Williams, and Lemanuel Donaldson. I want to give thanks to Dr. Mia Tuan for guiding the panel discussion, and my friend and community colleague, Dr. Brent Jones, for his opening remarks. As board chair, I support the Alliance for Education for three main reasons. My husband is an educator, my father-in-law and my father were both educators, and this is a way for me to honor them and their commitment to the public school education. It's important to invest in public school education, especially the Seattle public schools, its students, teachers, staff, and administrators. It's also an important time to give your time, talents, and treasures, and those treasures are your individual donations. Please give to the Alliance for Education because your contributions have a direct impact on the equity and the educational justice of our Seattle public schools. I'd like to thank our sponsors, our presenting sponsor, Nordstrom, our champion sponsors, the uh, Amazon, Alaska Airlines, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Boeing Company, Comcast, and Microsoft. Our community partners, RBC Wealth Management, Urban League of Metro, Metropolitan Seattle, University of Washington's College of Education. I also want to give thanks to everyone behind the scenes. The leadership of Lisa Chick and Roxanne Christians, the incredible Alliance for Education staff, our committed Alliance for Education board members, and the Hyatt Regency Lake Washington Hotel. This is an awesome, awesome venue. So again, have a great afternoon, and thank you for tuning in.